you know, I, I, one night I went to sleep and had this crazy idea that, you know, there's a massive gap in, in cricket, the sport that I love and, and knew everything about. So I had this goal in my mind that I wanted to tr create this shoe. We spoke about Painter as a name, as a brand. It goes back to my family and my heritage because it wasn't just me that played cricket, it was my great grandfather who played for England back in the Bodyline series. And got the heritage behind us to back up this name that, look, this is not just some Joe Bloggs doing a cricket shoe. This is years and years and years of experience and knowledge ploughed into this brand. I guess Rash saw us on social media and he got in touch with his, his agent and said, look, you know, Tom, can you get in touch with, with Dave? I really like these shoes. But he's been great to work with, you know, and he wants to get involved and help, you know. So we said to him, look, you know, we want to, we want your ex experience and expertise. You know, I think that's, that's probably one of my um, faults, flaws, I guess, is that you, to, to look back and reflect on what you've done is, I don't do it enough. You know, you should do really, but you don't because I think you're just so into what you're doing. You're just focusing on the next milestone. Hi team, Neil from Sirius here. I'm really excited about this one. We've got David Payne, who's the founder, uh, owner, managing director of Painter Cricket. He's joining me today at the Cricket Centre. We're going to have a chat about how it all started, where it's all got to, everything about Painter. Um, it's going to be a great conversation, hopefully. You're going to give me loads of information, Dave, and, and loads of inside uh, info of what these guys are, are, are probably wanting to, to hear. So um, I, guess, I guess from my point of view, um, Painter um, has been around for a few years now. Um, certainly seen as a exciting challenger brand that's come in, has looked at the cricket footwear market and with hope with some professional cricket background has gone this is what we need as a cricket footwear range. So I think my first question has got to be um, how, how, did, how did it all start for you? A big question. It's a big question. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I, going back before that, I guess I need to start because it all kind of wraps into one. Mm. I was a cricketer from leaving school and it's all I ever wanted to do was be cricket, really. Yeah. I wasn't really interested in business or anything like that. And I managed to do that. So I managed to achieve a goal, which you know I always dreamt of. Became a first class cricketer, got a first class 100, by the way. Um, nice. And yeah, got that one in. Um, but yeah, so I got to travel the world, which was fantastic. So it gave a lot of opportunities to me, but I met a lot of people throughout those years, which I later actually found out were very important. Um, so I ended up finishing cricket and um, I went to work for my dad, just as a, yeah, a contract flooring manager. And it got to a point where I did that for like six or seven years and I thought, this is, this is not for me. You know, I need to do something with my life, but I don't know what, what it is. Um, so I, I came out of the company and I ended up looking after my two kids for a year at home. So I was a stay-at-home dad. My wife was a my then girlfriend was a nurse, still is actually. Um, and I guess when you've got that time on your hands to think about what do I want to do with life, <laughs> you know, it's quite deep. But uh, you underestimate what you're capable of, I think. And you know, I, I, one night I went to sleep and had this crazy idea that. You know, there's a massive gap in, in cricket, the sport that I love and, and knew everything about. Um, in footwear, you know, I just thought, well, the footwear out there is just crap, really. You know, it's not great. You know, they're missing a trick um, about the performance shoe, really getting a really good performance shoe. You know, looking at a running shoe, looking at different sports and saying, look, there's, there's a gap here in this sport. It's, it's been forgotten about for whatever reason. Um, and uh, I got up in the middle of the night and wrote, wrote all this down so I won't forget. I said to my wife, uh, girlfriend, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to create a brand. And she just laughed at me, obviously. <laughs> and said, all right, from the beginning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she was good, actually. But I think the initial, uh, anyway, that, that kind of went on. Uh, but I didn't know anything about business or creating a brand or finance or product or R&D or anything. You know, I just, I just went with it, Googled a lot. But you knew cricket. I knew cricket, so I knew what I wanted to achieve. Yeah, good point. So I had this goal in my mind that I wanted to create this shoe. 
just this this one shoe and I'm, I'm going right I need to buy a trainer I need to get it spiked I need to do this I need to I had to find a factory in China I went on Alibaba I found this factory communications tough um, you know and it got to a point where my, my, my girlfriend just said look why don't you fly over to China you know spend some of the savings that we've we've got and, and get on a plane and go see this guy so I did you know so and it was the best thing I did and we're still with this fa one of the factories now in in China to this day so he's a he's a good friend of mine now which is really important in terms of relationships dealing with with factories um, but yeah I think that that was obviously just the start and then you've, you've got to get the communication over to a, a Chinese factory about cricket they don't really understand the game of cricket so that was tough um, but time went on the prototypes got better um, you know we had some interesting prototypes at the start I think I remember one where you know it was early on and the shoe looked good it looked all right and then I got to the outsole where the spikes are and I just kind of wiggled the spikes like that and it nearly fell out and that was just by my hand and I'm like oh my god this is not going to work for cricket. <laughs> so, so how long was that? How long was that process of of, of, so, of development? Yeah. Was... So I, I guess idea wise, right at the start was I think 2015, and then we launched in January 2017 to put it in perspective. So you've got got a kind of a, a full two year position where I'm you know yeah. driving a white van, yeah. earning a bit of money for the family, trying to build this vision, you know in god knows in the middle of the night and not getting any sleep whatsoever um and i was just possessed you know i just had such a confidence in this idea that it'd work because i knew this gap were there and i was just doing it under the radar and just thought you know that's it i wasn't really bothered about you know making money off it as such it was just about creating this gap that needed filling that i thought and i guess that's when i kind of had to learn more about the business side of things and what I'm actually jumping into in creating a brand because it's not easy. Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> to say the least. And I think and I think, you know, that's that's evident sitting here now in twenty twenty two, that that often when you see a gap in the market, to actually fill that gap it takes it takes that time, energy, effort, investment, relentless yeah. development and and a strong self belief mm. in I can do this yeah. <laughs> and, and you know you've clearly put a lot of things on the line there to to to, to go out and achieve that yeah. and, and I think uh, having you know spoken to you a bit now you've got to be really proud of the journey of that starting point to, yeah. to, to, to what we see in front of us now I think that's, that's probably one of my um, faults flaws I guess is that you, to, to look back and reflect on what you've done is, I don't do it enough. You know, you should do really, but you don't because I think you're just so into what you're doing. You're just focusing on the next milestone, Definitely. you know, and, and then, uh, you know, you kind of do something you're like, right, great, fantastic, celebrate, blah, blah, blah. We need to do this now. So then it's just that entrepreneurial, I guess, mindset to just keep striving and striving and striving. But you're right. You know, you do need to take note about where we've where we started and have a laugh about it, and yeah. and you know, accept that you, you, we've done great things. You know, myself and the people around me and the team uh, to get to where we are now because it hasn't been easy. You know, it's been so tough. Building a brand is really hard. And I think and that's I've been excited about sitting down and doing this chat because we. we I think we've got similar personalities. We've gone through similar things. We started, um, I started Sirius in 2005 with exactly the same ethos and mentality that you started with. It's, it's finding that gap in the market and doing something really well and better than everybody else to be able to move it forward. And so you, you, your first pair of, your first pair of shoes, you, you've, you've got them and you've put all that time, energy and investment into it. And then you're literally putting them out and the spikes falling off. Like what? What? Yeah, is, yeah. what at that point, what are you, are you thinking? <laughs> Painter's got a future here. I, I you know, you, I don't know. You, you kept that belief. To keep yeah, going. you've you've got to do. I mean, you're disappointed, and but at the time, I didn't have really a you know, I didn't have a deadline to say right, we're going to launch on January the sixth, two thousand seventeen. So I went up against it in terms of time. It was just like okay, that's another thing they've got wrong, but they've got that right, that right, and that right. So it's an improvement on. The last sample and and that's just a process that you have to do and we still do that to this day we're just a little bit better at it and they're a lot better at it so it's a little bit quicker and more efficient 
Um, so in, in, in when you were designing these products, going back to 2015, 2016, the, the, what was the gap that you'd identified in the market? What? Um, I guess it stems back, uh, when I was a player, I used to get um, more of a, a trainer spiked up. And, you know, the, you put all that cost together with a trainer and the hassle and the, the, the time getting it to a cobbler and the blah, blah, blah. You know, I was like, well, why? There's so many people like Graham Swan, a friend of mine who played at North Antwerp, and a lot of other players were doing this. And, and that, I guess that was the one point that I identified in that, you know what, there's a reason for doing it, you know, because these shoes out there at the moment, a bit heavy, clunky, ugly, a bit like diving boot kind of thing. I've used that in a few, few interviews. And um, I guess that was, that was like, well, you know, they're spending hundreds of pounds on this shoe, yet nobody's providing that as a brand. Then surely that's just me solving that problem. And, but that's a problem solving thing. Creating a brand is different again. You know, you've got to get a brand. So I think the brand, I'll, I'll just tell about the brand because that didn't start as painter either, believe it or not. So it started as a, a brand called Flix, which I did. And Flix? Flix, yeah. Okay. Which is different. But anyway, we won't dwell on that bit too much. We'll move on to the good stuff. Because we used to have Flix pitches. Oh, yeah, was, yeah, yeah. Was, uh, was something that it that never came, came to market, don't worry. Fine. But then, you know, I, I, I met a few more people and we, we kind of came up with this uh, name, Painter, which is obviously my surname, but mine's got the e, ER at the end. Okay. So we dropped the E, but it sounds the same, uh, slightly shorter, which for a brand is a, a little bit more important. You don't want it too long. It makes your autographs a bit quicker as well, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> one that's learned to wear that. <laughs> um, I hadn't signed one then for a while. Um, so, but... The, but then when it all made sense and we spoke about Painter as a name, as a brand, it it goes back to my family and my heritage because it wasn't just me that played cricket, it was my great grandfather who played for England back in the Bodyline series in the 30s. So it all kind of tied in together that we're using the family name, we've got the heritage behind us to back up this name that, look, this is not just some Joe Bloggs doing a cricket shoe. This is years and years and years of experience and knowledge plowed into this brand and this is what you're going to get you know so and <clears throat> so this is where you know you, you're not actually starting a brand from scratch you're using all that heritage from within your family so it was, i think it was eddie wasn't it who yeah going yeah. back to the I 30s was in was was in that body line series with harold larwood yeah. and, and bradman, bradman and, Jardine. Um, and scored and scored a few runs as well did all right yeah so so got, it, got you a little know, left-hander i I've, I've, I've done some research, yeah, I've seen yeah, that, because yeah, yeah. um, I wasn't around then. Um, but you can see <laughs> that, 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 that in your range, that heritage comes through, you know, clearly the knowledge of cricket, your understanding as a player, yeah. um, and you're right, we went through that stage maybe in the, late, in the, in, maybe in the 90s where everybody was getting trainers and just putting yeah, spikes yeah, yeah. on because we wanted a light bit of athletic footwear that served a purpose for cricket. Yep. Uh, really what you've done is you've taken that and supercharged it. And, exactly. And added a bit more cricket to it. Yeah. That, that we now end up with a range here that is modern, it's funky, but it's also very practical for the modern day cricketer. We talked about, um, you know, we'll, we'll, met, we'll talk about Rashid Khan in a minute, but um, all this footwear it is gonna serve whoever's playing the game mm. at whatever level any bit of your footwear really hits that mark for, for yeah play. And, and, and that's it boils back down to the brand and and that we kind of know what we're talking about you know it's that's it's in our dna so to speak so that's where the brand's powerful and that you know building a brand is is slightly different to building a product you know you've got to kind of tell that story and and keep pressing that on and then you you know you you get these people in and they become part of your brand you know and you, you form a culture you know and that's that's really important from the brand point of view but but to get those people in you've got to pr produce these products and you know you've, they've got to buy into what you're trying to achieve you know so it's a constant battle and you know we're still doing that now 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 you know as we as we grow and into you know bigger things um, 
it's, it don't get any easier. Mm. Um, so let's roll forward then from, from your 2015 to 2017 experience of de developing that first shoe. Yeah. Um, we then launch into the 2017 season. Mm. How, 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 did that, how did that go for you? Because that must have been an exciting <laughs> yeah. time of yeah, suddenly yeah. seeing your footwear out there. Yeah, I, was, um, I remember it well. We, went, we were in my dad's garage. Yeah. We had, we had stock and we had a Shopify website. And I think we did something like 46 pairs, I think on the first day. Wow. We were like, whoa, that's, that's amazing. That's good. Like we were just over the moon. Like, cause you don't even know if you're gonna sell a pair of shoes. Sure. Like you, you literally don't know until you, it was so nerve wracking pressing that live button. Um, but yeah, that was, that was quite hard for me. So it was, that was a nice time. I had my family around me, you know, and that mm -hmm. kind of thing. So you, you kind of, you know, that, that's something you don't forget. And your range at that time, just that one shoe? It was one shoe in three colorways. Okay. So the same shoe, very lightweight, um, trainer-esque, you know, yeah. quite a lot of mesh with some overlays. Um, the first shoe I pushed out, a little, we did make mistakes, obviously, as you do, and you always make mistakes, but then you learn. We had some speed tie laces, which instead of just tying a normal lace, we had this um, speed tie buckle because um, it was like an all-in-one collar fit. So you put your shoe in, uh, you put your foot in, sorry, and it locked your, locked your foot in position. And then you just kind of put this speed tie lace down. You know, you don't have to try your laces. So um, yeah, one of the problems there, I think we ordered a few thousand pairs to start with. And um, obviously the shoe, predominantly cricket shoes are white. They have a little bit of color on, which is cool. And these laces were white and the toggles came and they were like cream, off cream just my head nearly blew up I'm like no way so we had to source because I said I can't I'm not launching a shoe with a cream buckle and a white shoe that's just kind of my biggest nightmare so we had to source all thousands of these toggles from Amazon and get them in before we sent any shoes out I had all my family relacing the shoes putting them all on that was the first problem from the first batch <laughs> um, but yeah that's just just a little flavor of uh, it never goes straight forward they're never straight forward and it's, it's still not straight forward now it's just you know you just get better at dealing with the problems and the factories to resolve them and i think you know this is the this is the insights of you know the manufacturing process into becoming a brand uh, taking those experiences, developing it, making sure if there's something goes wrong, we, we keep learning from it, and you, yeah. you, you build and build, and and, and you, you know we keep we, we're moving forward now, and obviously we then got to you started to develop other shoes, other footwear into your range. Yeah. Uh, at the same time, we then hit the pandemic of uh, mm. how did how did that play yeah, out? That was you? tough. Was that? that was really tough. Yeah, as it was for everybody, you know, because yeah. I guess. Cricket as a sport just shut down, you know, so, you know, you've got staff to look after and you've got to keep the brand relevant. You've got to keep it out there in the public eye, you know, so you can't just disappear, you know, but revenue stopped and things stopped coming in and it's and it was it was a scary moment. Yeah. And we had to tra change our strategy and really say, look, you know, we've got to push the D to C model a lot more and see if we can keep ticking that over. So and 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 that but that was that was really team effort it was really good team effort that we got behind each other and said right you know we, we we've got this strategy in mind we're going to really focus on on d2c because nobody's allowed out of their house <laughs> um but people are ordering online so um you know and that worked well and it saved us to be honest but yeah it was tough i remember i was on the sat on the trampoline my daughter's trampoline and she came over and put an eye patch on me <laughs> i'm sat on my laptop Put an eye patch on me, I just, and I just kind of pulled it up over my head, and then she, she got a picture of me. I don't know why, but yeah, I'm just sat on my, sat on my laptop thinking, what is going on here? Like this is, you know, end of the world kind of thing. But you just, I mean, I don't know. It's part of the journey. I'll have to put it in a book one day. And it will be. It will be part of the journey. And, and, and but moving that journey forward, cricket then came out of. That, yeah. that period of time, it, we, we've sort of all bounced back, and one of the first things people wanted to do was 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 leisure and, and get back out on the cricket pitch. So we're now in 2022. I'm sitting here with you. We've got a, you know really good range in front of us. Yeah. Um, 
you, you, you must be pretty happy with where you've now got to as a, as a, as a brand in terms of... Well, I'm never happy. No, okay, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Not fully, okay. but no, I am, I am. It's a, it's, it's, well, it's a good trade. It's the best you're range. always looking to make things better. You've got to do, haven't you? Although you can't be content and say, well, I'm 100% happy with that shoe because no. I'm not. You know, there's always things you can do. There's always room for improvement and there will be. The next so shoe will be better than that shoe. One thing you obviously have done is you've engaged with Rashid Khan. Yeah. Um, you've got him on board. Tell us about that. You've got him on board to help you. Well, yeah. how, did, how did that all come about? Uh, Rash, um, yeah, I mean, Rash, Rash is, I guess Rash saw us on social media and he got in touch with his, his agent and said, look, you know, Tom, can you get in touch with, with Dave? I really like these shoes, you know? And, and he wore these, he wore some of our painted Vs, I think, um, to start with. And obviously Rash has just blown up in terms of, you know, he's amazing and a lovely guy as well. Such a nice guy, but he's been great to work with, you know, and he wants to get involved and help, you know. So we said to him, look, you know, we want to, we want your ex experience and expertise, you know, why wouldn't you? Yeah. You know, you're one of the best players in the world at the moment. So if you can get on, you know, pick a phone up and ring me and we'll just chat about product and what you like and what you don't like. And, and we did, and we, we you know, we, we, we speak about that and he had a lot of influence in, in, in these shoes in particular. What, what did he, what, what, was, what, what, if you're looking at that pair of shoes there, so we've got the XPF um, 19s. Yeah, yeah. So clearly yeah, 19, his number. His number, yeah. yeah. What, what influences can, can, you, can you tell us that, that he's really made in that shoe? Um, Rash wanted, he wanted more stability, um, which we didn't have in that shoe to start with. Um, and he was testing it, so he's like, look, I need, I need it more stable there. Um, my, my foot feels like it's moving slightly. Okay. So we changed the last. So the last is the, um, the shape of the upper, basically, what your foot goes into. So if you get the last wrong, it is quite a big thing because your foot can move around too much inside the shoe and then that can cause a little discomfort or you, you can twist or whatever. So, you know, that were a massive thing. So straight away I said, look, yeah, we can change the last. We can get um, a, a P-Bax stability plate put inside the midsole, which should alleviate that twisting in terms of, you know, everyone, as a spinner in particular, you, you twist, you know. Yeah. So it felt like it needed more stability there, which were a massive performance thing. So I thought, fantastic, you know, you can't get better than that. You know, he worked on the colorways with us. Um, what was his take on the colorway? Did he not like the orange? Is that He's, he likes blue, blue right. <laughs> you know, there's no, there's yeah, no science yeah. behind it, no, no. <laughs> you know, these things like are blue. not, um, so yeah, he likes blue, we sent him some Pantones and he chose one and, and we went, yeah, we like that, yeah. uh, and I think, I think we added the orange flare because that were our touch and we said, look, it matches mm. the XPF range, so we got, we got both in, mm. you know, he was happy, we were happy. Um, so XPF range for 2022 then, um, yeah. four shoes in the range look fantastic happy with happy with all of them yeah yes i am um i think we've got everything to cover every player's needs in terms of performance you've got you've got obviously the p6 which is the bowling boot which mm -hmm. i'm i'm super pleased with it's been tough to get that right yeah i'm not saying it's 100 percent right but it's it's better than last year and that's i think that's all you can hope for yeah you know we've got something in the middle for like a seaming all-rounder which is an all-rounder shoe um which does have the stability um, slightly lighter, and then you've got the um, the batting shoes, the the 22 and the 19. Obviously, Rashid wears wears the 19 ones. Um, various players, super lightweight, you know, feel like a slipper kind of thing on your feet. Mm. You know, they really do want to go down as light as possible, but you do need that stability, as Rashid said, and that slight toe protection. If you get a Yorker on your tour or whatever, you know, it's going to work, so. I think for me, your, your XBF 22 and 19, regardless of the colorways, that for me is, that, that solved your original challenge of the trainer that's being yes. spiked up. Because that, that is by far, you know, a fantastic lightweight shoe that's yep. built for cricket. Yeah. That, that if one in the guys would have had that as an option then yeah. they wouldn't have been sending trainers off to be spiked exactly. up because everybody would go for that. Well I'm glad you said that so that's yeah it's nice to hear so yeah and, and I felt like in, in the process of say between 17 and, and today 2017 and today we may have lost our way a little bit in terms of trying to do too much mm. and that's where you know 
I said this year for this XPS range, let's really strip it back to 2017 and go back to why I started this brand and what it means mm. and what problems we were trying to solve. And the demand back then was for that style of shoe. And I said this shoe or these shoes, we want to really try and get back to that, but better. Mm. Do you know what I mean? And I feel like we have pretty You've much done that. that. Yeah. So you, your XPF, what, what does XPF mean? What's that stand for? Is that? So XPF is Experience Pain to Fusion. Um, so it's basically fusing together different elements of a product um, that we know, that we've thought about, or something like Rashid said, mm. which is an element that he wants in there, and then I've got one, and then we put them two together. That's, uh, that, that's performance multiplied as well, which is a brand, that's our strap line. That's mm. our major thing which we stand for. We're all about performance. We're all about adding um, performance to the athlete and, and giving them the best product that will give them that edge. Mm. And it might only be 1%, 2%, but I think as a, as a sportsman, you take what you can get, you know, and, and we want to try and provide that in our footwear. I think often uh, as a sportsman, certainly in cricket, the first, one of the things that's often neglected is what you're putting on your feet. You know, ultimately we, we play this game, it's a long game. If you're going to be in, on your feet in the field all day for eight hours, you've got to be comfortable. You've got to be yeah. wearing something that is good. And if that does give you that extra one, two percent, then then brilliant. It's going to make your performance even better. So I think it's a, an element of equipment that's often neglected yeah. uh, and not necessarily given the time. But yeah. in this range, there's something for everybody. Um, Rashid Khan. I mean, how, w w w Someone like me, I'm going to have one pair of one pair of shoes that will last me probably a few years. How, how, how many pairs? Is I knew you were going to ask. You that. knew. You were going to, how many pairs? How many pairs does Rashid want from you each? Because um, he's playing every day. I, I, I told our, our new distribution partner last week um, to put ten pairs away from him. Right. He said, "How many do I put away for Rashid?" Wow. I said, "Well, let's let's go eight to ten for now." Yeah. <laughs> The guy plays a lot of cricket. He does. He plays a lot of cricket. And that's no reflection on the shoe, it's just the amount. Because don't forget, people see him playing, but he's training day in, day out. You know, obviously he gets the odd day off, but they're training all the time. So he's always on his feet, just yeah. like you say. And, you know, going back to that point, we want to try and educate people that footwear is part of the equipment. Yeah. It's as important as the bat and the pads and the box. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You know, it is because you're on your feet all day long. You know, yeah. it's, it's what connects you to the ground. You know, and we, we've seen we've seen um, we've seen we've seen the growth of Painter over the last few years. Just um, uh, here at Sirius with what we do. From from you as a, a brand point of view, where in now in twenty twenty two, where do you feel you sit in terms of footwear providers for the for the cricket market? Yeah, um, that's a good question. We're definitely climbing that ladder. We're definitely climbing. We're just doing our thing doing what we do right and we're trying to build the best product and mm. I think product will prevail in the end. Mm. Yes, there's things going on around us that will help. There's brands coming in, there's brands pulling out and yes, it helps, but we don't rely on that. That's mm. just mm. that's just a bonus. You know, it's, it's you've got to get your vision, do what you've got to do and I, I'm a strong believer that if you keep doing that, you're going to get to where you want to be. And You know, back in my bedroom in, in 2015-16, I wanted it to become the, the biggest um, cricket footwear brand in the world mm. and to have that chance to to do that set here today is incredible really you know we do have the ability to get to number one eventually it might take a few years but we've actually got that slight chance to do that mm. you know and, and I'm, I'm confident that we will eventually get there you know we've got a global distribution network now we've got an office in India um, which is a whole different different ball game and, and we are venturing into to different sports as well. So We'll touch on maybe that in a second. I mean, you've also got some good people around you. You've, yeah. you, you like some Michael Vaughan been involved for a yeah, period Vaughan. of time now? Yeah, yeah, Vaughan, is, Vaughan is, again, a bit like Rashid. I had a lot of input, he's a good friend of mine. Um, you know, and I think he's, he said a comment about, you know, early on, you know, Dave knows the game. He know, he's got the knowledge of the game. So there's no better mm. person to advise you on what you need yeah. as a as a as a player in terms of footwear. I think what we've certainly what we've seen um, as a brand yourself, um, y you're a real challenger brand into this market. I, I see, and I yeah. think um, you know, cricket, the game itself, has been stooped in tradition and history for a long time. And we've got we've got lots of manufacturers out there that make cricket footwear. We've got some global brands that that do a lot of footwear and then come in and do a cricket shoe. Yeah. Um, I think you sit 
outside of all of those. <laughs> and I think you sit so at the top end of, of quality in terms yeah. of product that you're producing, but it is specialist to cricket performance. Yeah. Um, and, and when people start with cricket performance when building the product, that that is testament to what we've got on the table now. You can yeah. clearly see that this is, you know, a step above, you know, other other product. Yeah. Which, whilst some people in the game won't have heard of Painter yet, I'm, I'm pretty confident that over the next five to ten years, they will. That they, they will have done. Um, which is which is really exciting for you. Um, yeah. And but but probably testament to the product uh, and the quality of the. Product. And, and we we focus on it. You know, that's a, that's a key word that we have. You know, one goal is to focus on on that footwear, and that's what we'll do. So your big global brands are massive, and they're focusing on a thousand different things. Yeah. So that's where you know, and, and that's where the gap led. You know, it's why the gap was there back in that you know in 2015 because mm. the lack of um, what's the word? I guess what's the word I'm looking for? The lack of um, interest, interest in, interest in, yeah. in that sport, in that um, category, mm. led to that opening mm. because they weren't focused on it enough. Yeah. Whereas we're focused on that. We're focused on what you know, the cricket product or the golf product, or we're really going to make it the best we can because it's what we do. It's all we do. Yeah. So you've touched it on there, then. So you, you've you've now got a really successful <coughs> cricket range. Um, more recently, then you've gone into golf. Yeah. How did how did that how did that come about? So we'll roll back to the middle of the pandemic. <laughs> Believe it or not, true story. You're on um, your trampoline. I'm on my trampoline on my computer. Get a message on uh, LinkedIn um, from a guy called uh, Mike Fawcy, mm -hmm. who's uh, based in Oregon in in, in America. Uh, Mike's background is is very impressive. He um, he started. Where did he start? Um, he started uh, he had Ping, and then he moved to Nike. I think he, he ended up being the head honcho at Nike uh, Golf Footwear for 14 years. Wow. Um, went to Under Armour for about eight years, uh, and then he kind of drifted off, and he got in touch with me. Made shoes for Tiger Woods, mm. Jordan Spieth, Greg Norman. You know, I'm like, whoa, <laughs> this guy's serious. Mm. Um, so he, he basically sent me a message on LinkedIn and said, um, you know, blah, blah, blah. I love the brand, love what you've done in cricket, the performance, mm. what you stand for as a brand. Uh, have you thought about taking it into another sport? Literally like that. And I'm like, I'd love to, you know, I'd love to do, but I, I wouldn't know where to start. I'd, like, mm. where are you going with this? So he said, look, give me his background, golf, blah, blah, blah. He said, would you be interested in, in taking painting into golf? And I said, absolutely. So the next thing, he's, he's got on a plane, he's flew, flew over from the States, come to our offices, met me. Obviously saw the white of his eyes, you know, see what if he's serious. Because you do get a lot of time wasters. It's, it's just, just yeah. the way the world is. But um, yeah, Mike, Mike was the real deal. Um, super impressive guy. You know, he knows everything about everything in terms of golf footwear. Mm. He worked with the best. Um, obviously the brands that he's worked with are incredible. And yeah, so we, we kind of formed Painter Golf, which is uh, an American based company. We got, um, we then got the head designer, uh, product designer from Under Armour, a guy called Mike Glancy on, on board as well. So the, the team kind of formed quite quickly, um, but it was all based around Mike Fawcett basically. So he's, he's been the catalyst in, in the golf. Um, but then, yeah, I mean, going back to the behind the scenes, you've got the contracts and the agreements and stuff, which I don't like. But you've got to do, and you've got to protect yourself. But that's what the people don't see. That's the behind the scenes thing. You, they just see this company being developed, and it's out, and then that's, whoa, it's great. But to get to that stage is really tough. Yeah. Very stressful. So I think one of the, I guess more recently, one of the <clears throat> one of the cricket companies that then went into golf would have been maybe Woodworm, and that didn't really work out too well for them. That was 2005. Yeah. And a lot of success off the the back of the Ashes. Uh, and then decided a few years later to then try and, and and sort of move into the golf world. I think I think your product's totally different to that. Yeah. Um, but you don't see any any sort of resemblances there. No, I do. And and the reason behind that is I've said before, and I, th I think I said it earlier. This the golf in particular. I don't like to push myself for the golf. Mm. It's all about Mike Forte, Mike Glancy over in America, 
read up about these guys and why we've gone into golf. Yes, it's called Painter yeah. because there's a, uh, there's a, uh, a knock on effect in terms of the performance and the message and the brand, you know, which is, which is a credit to, to me, but the golf is all them, you know, they're creating the product for the golfer. You know, it's, it's different to cricket. You know, there's so much technology in this first shoe with a graphite plate. It's about using the, the ground forces basically up through your feet into the swing to create more power. You know, again, Mike spotted this gap in golf that the brands weren't doing. Very similar to what I spotted Just in cricket. Similar to what you exactly. Did. And that's yeah. why the synergies were really well. there. And he said, look, I've got this, I've got this gap, you know, I know how to develop a shoe. I've got factories. So it was it was there for me, but I think my hard work up to, you know, the first five, six years got me that lead. Mm. You know, so there's 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 reasoning for everything. Well, it, sound, it sounds like you, what you've done really well is is pay the attention to the detail in terms of the yeah. quality of the product, then surround yourself by the experts and the key people in in, in, in that sports movement. Are the sports moving forward, or are we are we stopping at golf? No, no. There's there's. I mean, we've had offers to go into all sorts of sports. I mean, I don't think they're really serious offers, but just rolling them off. I think we had softball. Mm. Uh, you know, let's go into softball and um, tennis and things like that. But no, we 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 are looking to go into another sport, and that'd be hockey, um, which I think it's a natural progression in terms of the cricket side of things. A lot of the cricket yeah. and hockey kind of thing, yeah. similar kind of footwear. Um, you know, we can adapt that, and we've got some leads into that, which will be the next project. I can't really say much more than that, but yeah. So, so, so then you've got cricket, hockey, and golf, which well, is a nice. I think for all the people out there probably watching this who've, who've come on our cricket channel, a lot of those will be cricketers who want to be golfers. And yeah, there's, there's lots of us that, that exist like that, and there's probably also lots of people that that play hockey as well within that same synergy. So it's probably a good yeah. natural fit that once they've experienced your shoes in cricket, there'll be that natural association of, of, of a quality product. Yeah. I can get that in golf, I can get that in hockey, and, and, and I would imagine the brand will then just start to explode. It, it, it I mean, does. I mean, you've got to be realistic. You know, I'm, I'm yeah. not going to go into soccer. I'm not going to go football. You know, no. it's like, it's, it's not us. You know, you can see hockey being a fit for painter. Well, that's what you've done well, though. You've identified the, the, the need in the market, and yeah. then you've delivered a really, really good product. So I guess in, in wrapping this up from, from a cricket point of view, what, given where you've come from in 2017 when you launched your first cricket shoe, yeah. what, 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 what does success look like in the cricket world for you over the next five to 10 years? Where, where, where um, if, if we're having this chat again in 10 years time, what, what, what are we talking about? Where, where have Painter got to? What does it look like from, um, from a point of view? I from guess, a point of view? Uh, like I said, you know, I have got a goal. I want to be number one. I want to be number one in the cricket space. I think that's achievable. And what does that mean? What does that mean? I want to be the biggest footwear brand. Okay. You know, there's. I don't know if it's based on sales or demand. I don't know, but but I think you kind of when you're in this space, you kind of get a an idea of where you're positioning. Mm. You know, I don't want to start naming brands, but you know, we we are climbing that ladder yeah. quite quickly. Um, you know, we're adapting for different markets, like I mentioned, India and things, which is is tough. Um, but we've adapted to that with using the right people in that region. You know, we've got distribution uh, worldwide now and we're getting players like Rashid and other big players, a lot of players interested um, in this range in particular, which I can see um, moving over in the next year or so. And obviously I know what's coming as well. So we've got some exciting new cricket products coming. I've obviously got to work quite a far in front of myself in terms of yeah. product. So it's just getting better and better every year. And I don't know, I've got to keep enjoying it. And that's a big thing. Mm. You know, you can't lose sight of that. You've got to have enjoyment. You've got to get the balance right with your family and your time and business, and just life in general, you know, and that's really important to me as well. David, I think, I think it's been fantastic. I can, you know, I, I can see where you've come from. I really, I think your journey is fantastic. I think everyone at home, watching this will see the authenticity of um, yourself and what you've put into to the company, where you've come from, what you've developed, what you've done, what you've designed, and what we've got on the table in front of us. So, yeah. you know, it's, it, from my point of view, it's been fantastic to chat to you, the, the man behind Painter, the man behind who's ultimately who's created all of this. Um, I'm genuinely 
very confident it's going to be a huge success over the, it already has been but over the next five to ten years i'm pretty confident we'll have a chat in 10 years time <laughs> and, and we'll reminisce on this conversation yep. of, of where your journey was really just starting to take off and i think that uh, for anybody out there that's probably worn a pair of painted um, cricket footwear I, I imagine they're they're probably coming back for more yeah. um, for those that haven't yet worn any cricket uh, painted cricket footwear um, I'm pretty sure most of those people will, will be trying it soon. Um, just based on the quality and and and, and everything we've we've done in in yeah. other videos, and there are, we've we've done some other product specific videos on on your footwear uh, with some technical input from you, which is <laughs> great. Um, so I think the more knowledge and the more um, the more your brand is, is is exposed, and having people like Rashid Khan yeah. in the men's game using your footwear, Maya Boucher from the women's game wearing your footwear, that's only going to help create that 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 brand exactly. exposure. Yeah. Um, so look, I really appreciate your time. Things has been great. Um, if you've uh, enjoyed the video, uh, make sure you give us a like. Um, if you want to see further videos like this of getting the inside information behind the scenes of how the cricket world works, make sure you subscribe to our channel. Uh, we look forward to seeing you soon.